Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to this week's video. Okay, so this video has been requested pretty much non-stop since I actually suggested it on like a repop video the other week. So I finally managed to get round to making it today. This video is all about what to do with plants after you receive them in the mail. So if they're looking good, if they're looking not good, somewhere in between, do they have yellowing leaves? Are the leaves damaged? Is the soil dry? Is the soil wet? Is it in moss? What's going on? If you have just received a plant in the mail and you are super anxious, this is probably the video for you. So I'm going to cover various different scenarios in this video, including, you know, what I just mentioned before, the yellow leaves, is the soil dry, is the soil wet, anything like that. But I'm also going to include what to do if your plant looks seemingly fine because nobody covers this and I don't know why. I think because everyone thinks it's fine. It's not always fine. For anybody that doesn't know me, I actually have a rare plant shop, which basically means that I import like tons of different kinds of exotic, mainly aroids, every single day. So I'm used to dealing with fussy plants literally on the daily. I also look after around about 500 houseplants at any given time in my shop. So I guess you could say I've got some experience in rehabbing plants after shipping. The advice I'm going to give out in this video today is based on my general knowledge of aroids. Now, some aroids are obviously more fussy than others, but generally the information that I'm about to provide to you can kind of apply to all of them. You'll see what I mean. So let's get straight into the video with scenario one. Now, scenario one is you get your plant in the post and you receive it and it looks fine. There seems to be no issues at all. Everything looks completely and utterly as it was on the image when you bought it on the website. Now, I have here a variegated Syngonium and it's obviously not looking the most amazing it could look after shipping. Now, this is pretty typical of a plant to ship. I don't know if many people know this, but this is this is reasonably typical. This is what you might get. Now, this plant has been, of course, shipped out in sphagnum moss, but some plants may be shipped out in coir or something else entirely. Maybe they've full on parted up in a completely different substrate, which does mean that according to how these plants are shipped, different care may be required when they come in. And that goes for whether they seem to be healthy or not. So if your plant does arrive like this and it is seemingly fine, just take off the moss and pop it straight into water. Yes, water. I would say to do this for a minimum of 24 hours. If you're going to do it for longer than 24 hours, make sure you change the water you know, every single day just to make sure the water stays fresh. If your plant wasn't quite plump enough prior to doing this, it certainly will be now. 100% you should see the plant completely and utterly plump back up. Once you're ready to pot your plant up, make sure you put it into a really well-draining aroid mix. Keep it moist, keep it humid, all the stuff you'd normally do. If you have imported a really large leaf uh, anthurium, like an anthurium waraquinum or something like that, it would be helpful to either bag up the plant or put it into a cloche just to make sure the humidity stays right up because that's like the first thing that can go wrong with all these big exotic anthuriums. Anthurium regal is another one as well. That's terrible when that ships. Crystallinum can be a bit finicky too. Anything big and exotic, you're probably going to want to either bag that up or put it in a cloche or a terrarium or something like that. If your plant is a monstera, you probably don't need to keep it in water quite as, you know, as long as you probably would with other plants. Like philodendron, you probably need to keep that in water much longer, maybe 72 hours. Monstera, you can just do it for 24 hours and then pop that right up. Monstera tend to recover so much faster than a lot of other types of plants, to be honest with you. So if you've got a monstera, don't worry so much. You should be good. I'm now going to move on and give you advice on if your plant has not come in sphagnum moss and it's actually potted up. So if you receive your plant and for whatever reason, you know, the plant looks absolutely fine, but the soil is absolutely sopping wet. What you need to do is you need to put this plant in a warm place and not water it at all at least for a week until that thing dries out. If you're concerned about the sheer amount of water in the substrate, it's a really good idea to actually pop that on a heat mat if you've got one, just because the heat mat's actually going to allow like extra water to evaporate from that pot, as well as the plant actually consuming more. So it kind of works as double whammy for getting rid of that extra water, you know, much quicker if you're concerned. But one thing I will stress is do not water, leave it well alone. Do not remove it from the pot, just keep it the way it is. Keep your eye on it, but keep it the way it is. If your plant has arrived and it is potted up and the soil is absolutely bone desert dry, what you need to do is place it into a bowl of water, you know, a shallow bowl and water from the bottom upwards. So you take your plant, 
You put it into a bowl, you fill maybe an inch into that bowl with water and the plant will slowly take it up from the bottom. Once that top substrate is actually damp, you can remove it from the bowl and just place the plant where you'd normally place it. Do not repot. I repeat, do not repot. I'm going to be saying this a lot in this video, so just put up with it. I will explain why in a minute. When you are watering a plant in this way though, do make sure you keep your eye on it as if a plant has gone from like too dry to too wet, if you water it right through, you can actually initiate root rot. So be super, super careful. This is actually the reason why we're watering from the bottom up. It's so that we do not overwater it. So the plant can take what it needs and it's not just gonna be, you know, completely flushed through. So what do you do if your plant arrives and it looks great and the soil is moist and everything seems fine? The answer is you do nothing. You do nothing for a week. And I cannot stress this enough. Do not repot your plant. Let me tell you the amount of people that come to my shop that tell me that the plant that they bought from me arrived absolutely fine, they repotted it and now it started to die. The amount of people that message me that each week is becoming a little bit insane, okay? So what you need to do, you need to take your plant and let it acclimate. If it arrives fine and it seems fine, nothing seems wrong, don't touch it. It's like the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Leave it for one week to make sure that it can, you know, just rest and deal with the stress of transit that the plant has undoubtedly undergone. It's like if you are jet lagged from a massive flight and you get home from the airport and you immediately have to move house like would you do that no you wouldn't you would rest first for a week think of it that way you are causing so much stress to your plants by doing that i see this all the time on instagram i get a story post of somebody that's just received their plant because they've unboxed it and then an hour later it's repotted and i'm just like oh goodness me i hope this plant is okay please do not stress out your plants trust me your plants will be healthier and they will last longer if you let them acclimate for a week even if they look fine, because they might look fine, they might not be fine. Transit shock doesn't always happen straight away, if that makes any sense. Sometimes I can get plants into my shop, honestly, they can arrive and be absolutely beautiful. And they'll be just totally golden for like the best part of a week. And then all of a sudden, gone gone <laughs> just looking terrible okay so it can happen please 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 just let your plant rest for a week you will have a much happier plant if you do this okay so this is probably the part you all came for which is what to do if the plant is not looking so good you know it's arrived it's just not it hasn't had a good time for whatever reason the first thing I would like you to do, if you receive your plant in the mail, you open it, however it's boxed, however it's packaged, it doesn't matter. The first thing I want you to do, if the plant looks a little bit crap, is to take photographs of the plant. Do not disturb the plant in any way. Leave it in its original packaging, whether that is, you know, moss or it's, you know, potted up. Take pictures of the plant and speak with your plant seller i get this a lot from my shop as well people you know send me pictures of plants that haven't traveled well but they're already repotted and you know other things have already happened and it's like well how can i help you track down what is wrong with the plant how can i improve the shipping process is it a fault with the shipping process you know what has caused this damage if you repot the plant i can't necessarily tell what that damage is this is not just going for me by the way i know i keep mentioning my shop a lot but this is this is going for all sellers so i'm speaking on behalf of all sellers here it's very, very helpful if you take images of the plant on arrival. If you suspect that the box has been kind of bashed around, I would take a picture of that as well. I know it sucks, but so many things can go wrong in the shipping process, okay? So when you do take pictures of these plants and you do communicate with your seller, please do not assume it is your seller's fault because so many things can go wrong in shipping. So many things could go wrong in shipping. It could be just a temperature drop that no one foresaw. It could be that the courier mistreated the package. That happens a lot. It could just be because that particular species of plant just does not travel well and it's just notorious for being difficult, you know, to ship. It could be many, many reasons. So make sure you take a photograph of your plant before you do anything, before you remove leaves, before anything. Contact your seller and, you know, figure out between you the best way to move forward. But I know that's kind of not what you want to hear. So I'm going to tell you what I do when I receive plants and they're in not the best shape. So the first thing is plants with damaged leaves, okay? So when I say damaged leaves, obviously this 
plant here would be a regular looking leaf. This is Philodendron Gloriosum. It's packaged up how I would ship it out in my shop. And this here is a leaf with damage. Let me see if I can just focus that super quick. This leaf has obviously suffered some transit shock from, you know, A to B, whether that be from the supplier to the seller and then the seller to you or just from the seller to you. It can happen either way. I know this doesn't look amazing and I know it's not what people, you know, strive to take photographs on Instagram when they get a new plant. Don't get it wrong. I totally get it. I really do. But don't remove the leaf. This leaf, although it's, you know, has suffered some cosmetic wear and tear, this is a perfectly healthy leaf. And if you remove this, your plant is not going to recover as quick. You know, this can still photosynthesize no problem. So if you remove this, you're giving it less energy to pump out, you know, what you have here, which are new leaves. So please, please, please keep these leaves on the plant. Once you've grown a couple of leaves, if you want to, you know, cut that off, that's absolutely fine. But it's in your best interests and it's in, more importantly, your plant's best interests if you leave, if you leave this on, if you leave this on your plant. Again, I know it doesn't look uber amazing, but it's what happens. It's what happens when we ship really tropical exotic plants over to our climate. It just happens, guys. It just happens. But leave it on. It's good for the plant. So what do you do if the plant arrives like really like, you know, not good. I'm talking like yellowing leaves, droopiness, maybe even mushy stems. So we need to check the plant for rot. This does include the roots and the stem. If we find any rot, we need to chop that off. If we see any yellowing leaves, we can remove those immediately as the plant has obviously lost the root system and for whatever reason, it cannot support these extra leaves. So you could leave them, but they're gonna go anyway. If they're gone yellow, that's it. Game over for that leaf. So remove those and it can be a good idea. I know nobody's gonna like this, but it can be a good idea to remove up to two thirds of the healthy leaves on the plant. This is basically because if that plant has suffered root rot, it's not going to sustain those leaves either. They're going to die anyway. So if you do remove those leaves, the plant now has more energy to actually recover. Whereas if you kept the leaves on, it wouldn't. So I know it seems counterproductive, but it will actually improve the plant's chances if you remove a couple of extra leaves. Honestly, it's highly likely that they're going to go anyway. So if you remove them early, you're just conserving a little bit of extra energy for the plant to recover. Any water left in the merry stem is conserved. So it's not actually gonna be sent out elsewhere. The plant will be able to retain more water kind of for the long haul, think of it that way, to keep this plant alive. So I know this doesn't sound good and I know it's not what you guys wanted to hear, but you did ask me how to deal with plants after shipping and how to rehab them. And sometimes we just have to do things that we don't really wanna do to rehab these plants. But I promise you, you are really improving the chances of your plants surviving. I would never recommend something that was going to make your plant more likely to die. Like, I, I wouldn't do that. So I know it seems really, really not good. Please do consider it. So once we've checked the roots, we've cut off the rot, we've maybe decided to remove a couple of extra leaves along with the yellowing leaves, the best thing you could now do would be to put your plant into water, especially if that plant is, you know, a philodendron, a monstera, an alocasia. What you do from here on out is similar to what we would do if the plant came and it was seemingly okay, if it came in sphagnum moss. So put it in water, replace the water every day, and do not pot this plant until so you can see a healthy root system, you know, coming in. That could take a while, that could take a good two weeks, but you are massively improving your chances of survival if you leave that plant in water while it roots. If you put it in soil and it doesn't really have roots, it's not really gonna root. I mean, it can be done, don't get me wrong, but your chances just dramatically reduce if you put that into soil, despite the root system just not really being there. And again, high humidity, really fussy plants like, you know, Queen Anthurium, Anthurium regal, maybe Crystallinum, things like that would do really, really, really well if they were bagged up. So blow up a bag with, you know, air and place it over the plant 
or you could use a cloche or whatever it is you're going to do just to seal off that humidity. They will recover 10 times faster that way. Now that we've gone through all of that, I would like to give you some miscellaneous tips. These didn't necessarily fit into one thing. They kind of apply to kind of everything kind of generally. So I'm gonna go through these tips now. A lot of these are probably gonna to apply to you. So you're rehabbing your plants in water. I must, must, must stress that if you keep the water cool rather than warm, you are going to greatly reduce the chance of rot. Now, I know everyone says, you know, keep the plants warm and everything like that. In this situation, when the plant is just in water, do not try and keep the water warm, i.e. do not put your plant in water on a heat mat. Don't do it. Just do not do it you are really, really, really increasing the risk of rot. Not only that, but if you are also rehabbing plants in water, try not to group them in the same container. If you group plants together and one of them starts to rot, the likelihood of that rot actually spreading is kind of high, to be honest. So I know it's really annoying, but if you can separate your plants out while you rehab them, say you bought like five plants, try and keep them in different containers with different water. That way, if something happens to one of them and it, you know, it just gets rot, then it's not going to spread to the other plants. You've kept them, you know, safe from each other. Do not feed the plants when they're in water. I know it might be tempting, but honestly, just don't bother. They probably do not have the root system required. If you are rehabbing a plant in water, it's probably because if it's, you know, not applying to the, the 24 hour thing with, you know, sphagnum moss, if you are rehabbing the plant, do not feed it. I know it might be tempting. I know you might think that it's helping, but it isn't. If the plant is, of course, rehabbing in water, like we've just gone through, it probably means it's lost a lot of root. That's why you placed it in water, according to you know, the previous advice I've just given you. If you feed it, it can't, it can't take the feed up. It doesn't have the root system. It's just unnecessary. The plant doesn't need it. You are much better off just keeping it in clean water, clean, cool water every day. When you are rehabbing your plant, don't go full sunlight. I know this is like a super obvious one, but a lot of people might be more tempted to put it in a brighter spot for it to recover faster. Don't do it. Just put it where you'd normally put a plant. Grow lights are okay, but try and keep it a bit shaded. Just don't give the plant more than it can deal with. We're trying to reduce stress on the plant. So give it some light, but just don't, just don't get carried away. Okay, that's the best way I can put it. Don't get carried away. This is kind of a repeat of what I've said before also, but if you do have something high humidity, putting it inside a bag or a cloche or something to keep that humidity up will really, really help your plant recover. Okay, so this one isn't a tip. It's kind of more of a word of warning. So this has happened to me so many times and it's painful every time. I never get past this, but it happens every time. It is highly likely that it might happen to you. Specifically in philodendron, I don't have it so much with Monstera, but 100%, if you have a philodendron and it's got beautiful like half and half leaves, maybe like a Florida Beauty or something like that, even variegated Bilitai, something with a bit, you know, heavier, stronger leaves, that variegation might develop, you know, a brown spot and you might just get it kind of go brown and just kind of die. It's really sucks because it's kind of what you paid for but this can happen in the post, in the mail. Not always, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it's doom and gloom, but it can happen. And you will notice it happening if you see a brown crispy spot in you know, the middle of your sectoral variegation and it just starts to get larger. That's basically what's gonna happen. Now it's not all bad because obviously you have the nodes in the plant and they will. you've got the genetics because you know it's in the stem, right? So you can grow it back and get more of them. You know what I mean? You haven't lost your variegation, you've just lost your leaf. And I know it sucks, but I just want to let you know that might happen. So not a tip, more like a word of warning, a little bit. The last tip I have for you is if your plant has arrived and it just looks great, there are no issues, and I've told you not to repot it, just leave it for a week, but for whatever reason, you just, you just feel it welling within you and you cannot control it and you really want to repot your plant, please don't remove the substrate from the roots. So what I mean by that is, if I, I'm not gonna do it, but if I were to take out this, you know, the substrate from this plant, if I wanted to repot this because it's arrived fine, do not shake off the substrate from the roots, leave the roots alone. So if you can get that out of, you know, this pot without disturbing the roots, like, you know, you'll have all done it before when you repot, sometimes it comes out in a, you know, kind of a solid lump and you're good. Do not do anything with that. Just put that into your new pot, a little bit of new substrate around it if necessary, but do not disturb 
the root. Otherwise you're back to square one and you probably are gonna have a lot of shock to deal with. I must repeat, I do strongly advise you to not repot, but if you really, really, really aren't gonna listen to me, please do not shake off the roots, do not disturb them. Just kind of, just nestle it into the new pot with all the substrate and you will find that is much better. Now, I know that uh, all of that is potentially very confusing. It's like, okay, so what, what did I do if it was in moss? What do I do if it's potted up and it looks bad, but also it looks, you know, the leaves are yellowing and everything else. I know it's confusing. So what I've done is, and this may be slightly unnecessary, I don't really know, but I have made a flow chart that I've linked down below that you can print off and if you get a new plant in, you know, the mail or whatever, you can actually follow along according to what's happened to your plant and what your plant's needs are so that you don't really forget. So you've always got it. And that should help you work out what's best to do. Of course, always speak to your seller when you get the plant and it's not in good condition. Please do take photos. Be polite to your seller because I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but nine out of every 10 sellers want you to get good plants. They don't want to be sending out bad plants because it's bad business for them. So please be polite to them and please do not assume it is something that the seller has done. As I say, don't get me wrong, nine times out of 10, I would love to hear your horror stories, but please assume the seller means good intent. And I'm sure they would be happy to help you with whatever the issue is. Remember, a lot of the plants that you are ordering online have come from countries where just, I've been there myself. You know, I went to Thailand a few weeks ago. The, the conditions and the climate are so astronomically different from ours. Stuff like this happens. It's not cool, but it happens. And it's just part and parcel of owning you know, exotic tropical plants. It's just what happens. If it makes anybody feel any better, I get so many plants into my office and some of them die right back. For example, queen anthuriums for me die right back to a stump. Um, sometimes anthurium crystallinum also dies right back to a stump. They will grow back and believe me, they do. For example, if I get an anthurium waraquinum in and the leaves turn into Doritos and it goes all dry and then it just becomes a stump. When that does rehab itself, you know, in a few weeks and a new leaf comes out, the best part of this whole process is when that new leaf comes out, that's grown in my conditions. Do you know what I'm saying? So when you do rehab these plants and they do produce new growth, that new growth is absolutely golden because that's, that's growth that's happened in your conditions. So from that point onwards, you're good. I know it kind of sucks, but it it is just what happens and if it does happen and you know you don't want a refund or that's just not the option you know it's not the route that you're going down please rest assured knowing that when you do get that growth that is like super hardy growth because that has grown in the conditions that you've given it in the conditions that you've set out for this plant so there is 100 light at the end of the tunnel please do not lose hope you can do it you can do it <laughs> we can all do it Anyway, thank you very, very much for watching. I really hope that this helps you guys. I know that the requests for this video were just off the map. Even when I said I was doing the video, everyone was like, when are you doing it? When is it coming out? Please, please tackle this. Please tackle this. Please cover this. So I hope that I've kind of done you proud. And everything I've recommended in today's video is all stuff that I do on a daily basis with a variety of different plants that come into my shop. If it arrives in sphagnum moss, it goes in water. And that's just what happens. That is the best chance of survival for these plants coming in. I haven't given you any advice today. Believe me that I don't already do myself or I wouldn't do myself. So with that in mind, good luck with your plants. I hope you're doing great given, you know, all things considered. Please stay at home, stay safe, and I will see you next week, guys. Bye.